Welcome to Sweet Red Poppy, I'm Kimberly, and today we are talking all about Cricut's iron-on, which is also sometimes known as heat transfer vinyl. So first off, I wanted to thank Joanne for sponsoring this video. All of the supplies that I'm using in today's video can be found in your local Joanne. They can also be found online at joanne.com. So I am going to be making this adorable Crafty for Life t-shirt with my Cricut Explorer 2 and Cricut's Everyday Iron-On Vinyl. If you're not familiar with Cricut's Iron-On Vinyl, it's a special type of vinyl material that has a heat-sensitive adhesive on the backing and it can be used with a variety of different materials. Cricut carries a wide variety of iron-on vinyl materials, the most popular being their Everyday Iron-On. This is the one that we're going to be using today, and the Everyday Iron-On is versatile, it's durable, and it's really user-friendly. Honestly, it's my favorite iron-on material. So this type of vinyl can be used to layer, it can be the base layer, it can also be the top layer, or both. The Everyday vinyl is a warm peel. So what that means is when you peel it away, you're going to peel it while your project is still warm. So we have a few different types of iron-on. Sport Flex iron-on is another popular option. This iron-on pairs great with stretchy athletic materials. One thing to note about this is that you can't layer using it, which isn't a big deal, but it's something to keep in mind. Next is one of my personal favorites, which is Patterned Iron-On. Patterned Iron-On comes in a variety of different patterns, and it's able to add some extra dimension and kind of a pop to your projects. It can be layered on top of vinyl, but it doesn't work as well as a base layer. Now there's Glitter Iron-On, which adds some shine and sass to any project, and I love this one. I like to use it as embellishments on my project. It's not recommended to layer your Glitter Iron-On as it either isn't going to adhere or it begins to peel away after a few washes. Then there's Holographic Iron-On, which makes any design really stand out. This material should not be used as a base when layering, but it works really well on top of Everyday Iron-On. Foil Iron-On is a super popular option. This is one of Cricut's few iron-ons that is actually a cold peel. So after ironing a foil design, you're going to wait until the backing is cool to the touch, and then you can peel it off. The last type of iron-on is Smart Iron-on, which is only available for the Cricut Joy. And what's different about this iron-on is it features a thicker backing, so you can cut it without a mat. Now, let's go ahead and get started on our project. For this project, you will need Cricut Everyday Iron-on Vinyl, a t-shirt, either a Cricut Explorer or a Cricut Maker, a green standard grip mat, a Cricut Easy Press or an iron, a weeding tool, a Crafty for Life SVG file from our Poppy Club, and a True Control knife. Now I've linked all of the materials that I'm using in the description below, so go ahead and check those out. For our project today, we're going to be using Cricut's Everyday Iron-On Vinyl. To get started on your project, go ahead and open up your Cricut Design Space. For this project, we are going to be using a file, which is from my Poppy Club SVG folder. Now, if you're not already a member of the Poppy Club, I've put a link in the description below where you can read all about the amazing perks and the benefits of our Poppy Club, and you can go ahead and join us. While this SVG file is already sized for a t-shirt, feel free to adjust it as needed. You can use Design Space t-shirt template to ensure that it cuts to the perfect size. To start out, go ahead and click Upload. You want to upload an image. And I'm grabbing this Crafty for Life SVG file. Press Open and Save. So now I can insert my image. I'm gonna go ahead and change all of the colors on this SVG file so that they're one color, which will make cutting everything out a little bit more simple. I'm going to select the entire image and just press attach. Once you have your design ready, you want to go ahead and click make it, which is in the top right hand corner, and this will let you preview your screen. Be sure to mirror your image that way it is cut the right way for iron-on. If you don't do this, your image is going to end up backwards when you iron it onto your shirt. So before you cut, double check that your image is mirrored. After clicking continue, the screen is going to prompt you to select the material that you are using. I like to set the pressure to more. I would rather it cut through a little bit of my lining than it didn't cut all the way through my iron-on. 
So you will notice there are two different sides to your iron-on. There's a shiny side and this is your protective carrier side. This is what is going to protect your iron-on when you are ironing it onto your shirt. And then on the back side, this is actually your iron-on. So you want to make sure that you're cutting the right side. So what you want to do is place the shiny side face down on your mat. I like to just line it up with my left-hand side corner and smooth it out. Make sure that you don't have any bubbles and that it is firmly adhered to your mat. Next, you're going to insert your mat into your Cricut machine, whether you're using a maker or an Explore machine. So you'll just want to insert your green mat into your Cricut and go ahead and hit the blinking Cricut button. Now that my cut has finished, it is time to start weeding my project. I am going to be removing all of the vinyl that I do not want to transfer to my project. But first, I'm going to use my Cricut True Control knife. I like using this just to cut away the material that I didn't cut. And I really like to save all of my material. That way I have as little waste as possible. So I am just going to cut around to the edge of this design and keep things intact. So I'm just going to press firmly enough that this cuts through my vinyl and also my transfer, but not so hard that I'm cutting into my mat. You can just gently feel with your fingers where your cut begins and where it ends. You can just peel away this excess material. So I like to weed with everything on my mat because it keeps everything in place. I'm going to start weeding at the corner of my project. You can use the weeding tool to make it easier to pull the vinyl away from your backing. Once I have one of my corners up, I like to just use my fingers to pull the rest of the design. And I'm just using a 45 degree angle just to pull this excess away from my cut. And you want to just be careful that as you're pulling this, you aren't ripping anything. So just go nice and slow and be gentle with that vinyl. I like to use my weeding tool just to get those intricate parts of my design up. So that's gonna be things like inside of the letters if you need help seeing which parts of your design still need to be weeded, you can either hold it up to the light or you could even use a light box which would show light through the cracks where your machine has cut. That makes it a little bit more easy to see those intricate cut lines on your projects. Now you're going to flip over your design and remove it from your mat. You want to just peel the mat away from the transfer. This is a good habit to get in because while it may not affect this small design, if you were using cardstock or you were using vinyl, peeling away your mat from your design is going to keep everything intact, keep it from creasing or having any bubbling. So go ahead and flip over your design and just make sure that everything has been properly weeded. Look at it from the front and back. Make sure you haven't accidentally left any dots in the middle or anything like that. So this looks pretty good. Now that our design is ready to go, it's time to heat up either your Easy Press or your iron. I really like using Cricut's Easy Press because it has a large surface area and it heats up to a really exact temperature. It has a timer, so I know exactly how long I need to press my project for. But if you're using an iron, set it to the highest heat with zero steam. You wanna make sure your water basin is completely empty because the steam could really ruin your vinyl transfer. Now, you'll notice that the bottom of the iron and the Easy Press are very different. The Easy Press has a large flat surface while the iron has little holes for steam on the bottom. This can cause the iron's heat to not be as evenly distributed as the Easy Press. Since the tip and the sides of your iron are going to be the hottest, try to position the center of your iron on your project. Cricut has a really amazing online guide, which will tell you exactly what temperature, time, and pressure that you need to press your iron-on at. So the exact settings vary depending on the type of iron-on vinyl that you are using and the specific material that you are transferring to your base.
Also, be sure that you check whether your iron-on is a warm or a cool peel. This is going to let you know whether you should peel your backing sheet when it's still warm, which would mean a few seconds after you've pressed it, or cool, which would mean one to two minutes later. Cricut has spent a lot of time researching what's working best, so I always stick with their recommendations. For this project, we are going to be heating the Easy Press to 315 degrees and pressing for 30 seconds. I like to find the center of my t-shirt just to ensure that my design is perfectly centered. So to find the exact center of my t-shirt, I'm going to fold it in half and press the fold line. This gives me a line down the center of my shirt so that I can perfectly center my design later on. I'm also going to create a fold line that's right underneath the armpits. This is going to give me another line that I can work off of. Go ahead and open your shirt back up, and now we're going to preheat it. Preheating your shirt is going to remove any moisture that it might have. It's also going to flatten it, and it ensures that your iron-on is ready for application. So I'm just gently going over this. I still want to maintain my fold lines, but I also want to make sure that my surface is completely flat. So I am going to gently fold this in half and press a little center mark on my design on the top and at the bottom just to give me a visual guide. And I am going to line this up with my fold line right here. You want to make sure that you are placing your vinyl sticky side down. It should be in the right direction. You should be able to read it if you've remembered to mirror. And then I'm also going to line up my bottom fold with the bottom fold. This was off by just a little bit. And I like to make sure this centered line is about halfway through my design. Usually I like about an inch or two from the collar. If it's a lower V-neck shirt, it's going to be a smaller amount. That kind of depends on what kind of length you have right here. So I am liking this. Make sure that it is on there without any folds or wrinkles. Once you are completely happy with the placement of your design, it's time to press it. So make sure that your easy press or your iron is preheated. So I'm going to place this on the center of my design. I like to look from all angles just to make sure I have completely covered my design and that everything is good. And then I am going to press my Cricut button. The nice thing about the easy press is it's going to count down for me. I don't have to set a timer or try to count to 30 because I will probably mess up and get distracted. So it's just gonna count down for me. And I know that my temperature is correct, which is so nice. And then your easy press is going to beep at you once it's done. Now, looking at my Cricut guide, it tells me that this is a cool peel, but it also says flip and press for an additional 15 seconds. So I'm going to flip this to the back side and pressing from the back is just going to ensure that your design is fully adhered. It's like a little extra measure just to make sure everything is right. And I am just going to press this for half of the time from the back. And now is the waiting game. I just get to wait until this cools down completely. It might take a few minutes. While some people like to use a layer of parchment paper between their iron-on and their easy press or their iron, it's really just a preference because the backing is going to provide a protective layer between your vinyl and your press. If possible, cover your entire design with your easy press. If it's too big for your easy press to cover, you can actually press it in sections. So you can do one half of the iron on for 30 seconds and then switch to the other side for another 30 seconds. If your iron-on is a warm peel, allow your design to cool for about 10 to 15 seconds before you peel your backing away. If it's a cool peel, you're going to want to wait about one to two minutes or until your design has completely cooled to the touch before you peel it. Once your design is ready to be peeled, slowly peel it away from your shirt at a 45 degree angle. I like to start peeling from the corner of my design and then just slowly peel the rest. Just check as you start peeling that your design has completely transferred. Now we have this cute crafty for life t-shirt. To care for your t-shirt, you are going to want to wait at least 24 hours before you wash it. You'll want to turn it inside out and then tumble dry it. 
Your t-shirt should last at least 50 washes before it shows any signs of peeling or cracking. Now, let's talk about some things that might have gone wrong. The most common problem that I see with iron-on is that it just doesn't stick to your project. If your vinyl starts to peel up, be sure that you have used Cricut's recommended settings and that you're ironing on a flat surface. If you're still experiencing peeling, cover your iron-on design back up with a backing sheet and press it again for another 15 seconds. You can also retouch the back for an additional 10 seconds as well. Thanks so much for tuning in to Sweet Red Poppy today and learning all about iron-on. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Sweet Red Poppy. I'll be back next week with another fun crafty episode.